You are the greatest. 
the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we sing all together one more time? You are my great God. Hallelujah. The great I am. Hallelujah. 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 You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despite his shame and he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God, oh, mighty God. ah this morning we want to oh, lift up God. the name of the one who's seated at the right hand you are the of the throne God. of God you are the, the one who's seated God. at the right hand we of the throne of God the founder and the we perfecter of the our faith we worship the Lord. he who endured the pain we worship the Lord. Who he endured the suffering so that we Receive can be once praise. again called sons and daughters of God. Worthy is him. Worthy is him. Him alone is worthy to be lifted up and to be praised. For him alone is the God that made a way for us we in the midst of the darknesses of our lives. Receive all the praise, oh God. And this morning I want you to lift up your voice, beloved. Don't let this moment pass you by. Lift up the name of God. Worship Him. For now is the time that true worshipers are to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let your spirit connect to the ministry of God this morning. Let your spirit connect to the presence of God this morning. And as you lift up your voice in worship, God is bringing down, God is bringing down His presence on you. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we lift up your holy name. Sing the new song 
before his throne this morning. Can somebody lift up a voice? Hallelujah. Oh, All the angels sing and they bow down and they say, Holy.
serve God. Indeed, you are holy. You are the bread of Haya. You are worthy this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to receive our adoration. Thank you, Lord. To receive our praise. To receive glory and power forever and forever. We welcome you this morning once again among us. Take your place. Take your throne. Come and reign in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let your glory fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your glory, let your power, let your grace be released in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that anyone who is connected and anyone who is in place this morning receive from you. Receive from you. Grace and favor receive from you. Blessing receive from you. According to his expectation this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we glorify you. And we welcome you with shout of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Let's talk it, Lord. Let's put our end together once again. Let's put our end together. Let's put our end together for the glory of our Lord Jesus, the Master of Universe. Hallelujah. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. The one who reigns forever and forever. In the heaven, in the world, and under the earth, there is no one is like him. And is the only one who deserves to receive our praise and our adoration. Hallelujah. Let him be glorified this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all together we say louder amen. And God bless you. Musician, God bless you. Hallelujah. We are so blessed by the adoration, worship of this morning. Let God bless you. God renew you. And give you grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the house of God. When we come in the house of God, we need to feel his presence. Hallelujah. And the, every part of the service, it's very important. You don't know 
at what moment the Lord can surprise you. Don't wait only the moment of prayer. When they say, let's pray, now you start to pray and you begin to pray with uh, all your strength. No, it's the time also of worship. When we worship him, the heaven is open and blessing is releasing. Hallelujah. Change, transformation, grace of God is impacted in the life of people. Hallelujah. Let him be glorified this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Say a louder amen. I welcome you this morning in the house of God, in the presence of God, and I believe that this morning somebody shall be blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah. This is the word for you, not for somebody else. Hallelujah. Is the word for you. And I want you to receive like something that the Lord sent to you this morning. And I believe you shall be blessed before you leave this place. Hallelujah. And God bless you. Let me read uh, two scriptures this morning. Two scriptures. I want to be, I want to be focused this morning on these two basic scriptures we are going to read uh, this morning. The first one, we are reading it in the Second Samuel, Second Samuel, let's read chapter 9. We are going to read from verse, from the first verse, hallelujah. From verse 1, let's go down. We're going to stop somewhere, hallelujah. It's a long test, test. let's read it together. We read the word of the Lord. And David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul? Mm. To whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake. Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness? Mm. Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Emiel in Lodibar. Mm -hmm. So the king had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Machir, mm -hmm. son of Emiel. Mm -hmm. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore you and all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Verse 8. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me. Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth's grandson of your master will always eat at my table. Verse 11. Then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord, the king commands his servants to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's son. Verse 12. Then Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table, he was lame in both feet. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's read the second scripture. Is uh, Isaiah chapter 9. We are going to read from verse 1 up until verse 4. Isaiah chapter 9 from 1 to 4. We read the word of the Lord. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light was dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. 
They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, they bar across their shoulder the rod of their oppressor. Amen. Verse 5, can you read it also? Verse 5, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood mm. will be destined for burning, will be fueled for the fire. Amen. Verse, verse 6. 6, for, for to us a child is born, mm. to us a son is given, mm. and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the greatness of his government and the peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Mm -hmm. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. 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 Let God bless his word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We are so blessed to be in the presence of God this morning. And uh, we, fe we say thank you to the grace of God, to the favor that the Lord gave us this morning. And particularly, always we say it's a privilege to receive grace, to receive life, and uh, particularly to stand in his name. Hallelujah. And this morning, I'm one of the person I can say is by grace God that I'm standing here this morning. Hallelujah. And this is the reason we thank him. I'm speaking uh, in a few minutes quickly this morning in the topic that I'm going to give to you like this. The blessing of the covenant. The blessing of the covenant. Hallelujah. The blessing of the covenant. Hallelujah. There is a few things uh, we want to discover together with you in the word of God. Remember, when we are talking about covenant, we are talking about uh, a binding uh, a binding agreement between two persons. Hallelujah. A binding agreement between two persons. And uh, the benefit of that agreement is uh, to, the, to, 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 to both sides. The benefit of that agreement is to both sides. Hallelujah. This is the reason we say that there is a government. That means if there is a, a benefit... That benefit is not only to one side. That benefit comes also to the other side because of the government. Because of the government. That means the government binds the two persons together. And when they are binding together, there is a benefit or sometimes there can be also consequence. But I'm talking about the blessing of the government. Hallelujah. In the summary of the story, you know it very well. It was uh, in the house of uh, someone, uh, in the house of Saul, when raised uh, a man uh, in the name of David. And the Bible says, by the call of God, he entered in the palace of the king. And when he entered in the palace of the king, because the promise of God upon his life is supposed to be fulfilled, and uh, the Lord opened a door for him to enter in the palace of the king. Hmm. I think this month is going to be the month of the entrance in the palace of glory for someone here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I understand it because there is a three, three things I'm seeing in this scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that uh, the word of God come to pass in the life of David. He entered in the palace. And when he entered in the palace, the Lord uh, elevated him up until that uh, the glory of God upon him uh, started to, to, to provoke envy. To provoke envy upon him. And what happened after him to destroy the big giant that we call uh, uh, Goliath, the Bible says, the king himself. Because he saw what the Lord was uh, fulfilling in the life of David, he started to envy and to envy David, and not only to envy him, but he decided to run after him and to kill him and to destroy him. Why? Because when he put down Goliath, there was a thing that women was uh, singing in the city, and they say, "This is the man that the Lord raised among us." 
so that it can be the one is going to reign and to domain. We are giving to the king so only, only, only thousand, only thousand, only thousand. But to David, we are giving, we are giving 10,000. Hallelujah. And when the king hear uh, that story and that song, the Bible say, he has been touched in his heart and he starts to, start to strike the life of David. He starts to strike the life of David. But inside of the house of David, there was a, a person, one of the son, the, 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 the house of Saul, there was a, a person. It was the son of Saul, the one who supposed to become the king after, after, after the death of Saul. He, and the name of that guy, it was a Jonathan. The name, it was Jonathan. And the Bible said, when he saw that his father hates David, and he was ready to kill him and to sacrifice him so that his son can come and reign upon the kingdom. But Jonathan also sees something very particularly in David. Jonathan discovered that David was a very strong man, very powerful man. And there is a, a strange end upon the life of David who could help him to do exploits and to do wonders that uh, Jonathan could not do, even if it was the son of the king, but he could not do that. And between him, Jonathan, and David, Jonathan discovered that this can be the future king because I see something very particularly in his life. Hallelujah. This is the reason sometimes in our life, when you are living together with people, you need also to receive light from God so that you can discover what is the promise and the grace of God upon their lives. Because sometimes in our life, if you can't be seen by the Spirit of God, you can start to fight someone that the Lord puts in your way so that it can be your blessing of tomorrow. So that it can be the person is going to deliver you tomorrow. And you can start to fight him with that revelation. And when you start to fight him with that revelation, you are killing your blessing of tomorrow. You are killing your deliverance of tomorrow. But that was not the image of Jonathan. Jonathan, by grace and revelation, he saw in David that this is the one that the Lord chose. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes there is a thing that can be like a right in our life. The things that we deserve to receive in our life. But sometimes there is also a person who is not only deserve to receive it, but he has been called for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He has been called by God for it. It's not a grace for him. It's not something he deserves. But he has born to do it. He has born to fulfill it. And that was the image of David. David has born to become a king. David has born to become the ruler of nation. And that was the grace of God upon his life. And this is what Jonathan discovered in him. Jonathan saw that it's true that I'm the son of the king. It's true that according to the kingdom, I'm the one who's supposed to inherit the reign and the throne of my father. But between me and David, I discovered that this is very strong than me. Hallelujah. You need also sometimes in your life uh, to recognize the greatness and the grace of God upon the life of others. If you can't recognize the grace of God and the blessing of God upon others, sometimes, like I said before, you can fight what you did not call to fight. Yes. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that by grace of God is so, and he discovered that this is the one who must become the king. But he discovered also the other side, the hatred of his father is, was very strong. He's already, it was, he, he was ready to kill him and to destroy him so that his son can become the king. But by revelation, say after me, by revelation. Jonathan went to David and said, let's make a covenant together with you. Because I discovered that you are the one you're supposed to be the king, not me. Hallelujah. 
You are the one who has been called by God to reign and to give peace to this nation. Because I saw that there is a garment of God upon your life. There is a call of God upon your life. There is a strange end of God upon your life. I can't fight you, but I want you to become the king. And the Bible said, he, 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 took, he, he, he took his soul. He gave it, it to David. He took also some things uh, together with him. And he gave him together to David and said, let's make a covenant. And in this covenant, this is what is going to happen. We are going to fight together with you. But I know that you are going to become the king. But if you are going to become the king, if I'm not yet alive, I want you to take care of my family. I want you to take care of my family. I want you to take care of my house. Because I know that you are going to become the king. You are going to become the king. If I die before, I want you to take care of my family. And the other side. If the enemy succeed to kill me, David. I want you also, Jonathan, to take care of my family. Say after me, amen. But let me tell you the truth. When there is the end of God upon the life of someone, the enemy can't kill you before your time. The enemy can't stop the plan of God upon your life. They can fight you, say the Bible, but they cannot overcome upon you. Because the end of God shall be together with you to fight for you and to give you victory. This is the reason I say Darkness shall, shall not reign forever. For every time, there is a, always an outdoor of God to give deliverance and to give victory in the life of those who belong to God. And particularly those, they are working in the covenant together with God. This is the reason I'm speaking about the blessing of the covenant. Hallelujah. The blessing of the covenant. That means the covenant has been made. Between David and Jonathan. Hallelujah. And they start to fight together. They start to fight together. Can you imagine that Jonathan could be able to protect David from all the agenda that his father, his own father, his own blood could, 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 could manage so that he can destroy David. So that he can kill David. We need in life a people that can be able to fight together with you. Not only to fight together with you, but to protect you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we are fighting together with people. Ready to fight together. But when danger arrives, they, they are ready to expose you. They are ready to kill you. They are ready to put you before danger. But Jonathan, it was not one of the person. Jonathan, it was one of the person. He could fight together with David, but when danger arrived, he was able to protect him. Hallelujah. To protect him and to secure, to secure the government. Let me tell you something. In the benefit of the government, there is a protection of God and protection of uh, grace uh, who come in the life of people who they are working and they are living in the government. One of the blessings of the government is the uh, security and protection. Hallelujah. When there is a government between two persons, and I'm talking about the government between us and God, when there is a government between two persons, in that government there is a power of security and power of protection because we can never go beyond what we sign for. We can never go beyond what we put together like a decision and we say, this is going to be the government where we are going to work. That means every government ever is line of security and line of protection. This is the reason you need to be in the government together with God. Because when we are working together in the government of God, let me tell you the truth. In the government together with God, there is a blessing of God. And the, the blessing of God, we say, the blesser is the protector. The blesser is the watcher. The God who bless you, the God who work together with you, is able to protect you, is able to watch upon your life, to watch upon your family, and to watch upon everything that belongs to you. If you are together with me, I want to hear your email. 
And in that covenant, the Bible says, they start to watch one and another. They start to protect one and another. They start to fight for one and another so that they can be protected when the enemy shall appear, when the plan of the enemy shall come, when the enemy can walk and start to and, 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 and try to surprise them. They could be able to protect themselves and able to protect their lives and able to protect their family. Hallelujah. But like the Bible so to us, when the moment arrived that David supposed to become the king, the Bible said uh, Jonathan chose the path of his father and to go and to fight together with, together with his father. And what happened there? The Bible said one of the day when they went to the, to, when, to, when they went to the battle, the Bible said they could not receive grace of God to come back from that battle alive. They went on that battle and the Bible said they fall all together with his father, and they die on the battle, on the ground of battle. And when David hear that David, David hear that Saul and Jonathan, they, 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 they was fall, and they was there, they was die in the battle. The Bible say, his heart, he was crying in his heart and say, why Jonathan could leave me and choose the path of his father? And went to fight together, of, together with his father and die in this condition. But even if Jonathan died, David could never forget the covenant that he made together with Jonathan. Are you together with me? When there is a covenant, beloved, things can happen in our lives. Things can move around us. But let me tell you the truth. God never forgets what he promised to you what he promised to your life and what he promised to your family. If you are together with me, I want to hear your email. And when David became a king, this is the summary, when David became the king, the Bible says, by grace of God, he went and became strong and very strong. He became powerful and very powerful. And the Bible says he started to reign over Israel. And when he started to reign over Israel, he became very strong and very powerful by the grace of God. But one of the day, the Bible said to us one, he stood up a morning like this morning and he said this. There's still anyone who belong to the house of Saul who's still alive so that I can show my kindness or the kindness of God to that person. Are you together with me? Are you together with me? One of the things I want to, to keep in your mind this morning, whatever time you are passing through and moment you are passing through, God never forget the covenant he makes together with you. God never forget his words and his promise regarding your life and regarding your future. People and men can forget, but God never forget. He can look like God forget about you. He can look like God forget his word. He can look like God forget his promise upon your life. But let me tell you the truth. He arrived he arrive, he arrive always one of the day we call one day. The day when the Lord remember you and the Lord remember the word that he gave to you in, in, your, in, 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 your, in your destiny. If you are together with me, let me hear your email. And that day arrived when uh, this David, uh, 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 Jonathan, it was, not, it, it was not more there. When uh, the family of Jonathan has been abandoned, the family of Jonathan who was uh, in Lodebar in the house of Maki. And the Bible said, and in that house, the Bible said that this son of Jonathan on the name of Mephibosheth has been forget on that house, suffering, living in poverty, living in condition of life, very tough and very difficult, tough moment of his life he was went through. But the Bible said, when the king was uh, uh, on the throne, he remember and he say, there's still someone who belongs to the house of Saul and is still alive so that I can show you, I can show him the kindness of God. I can show him the kindness of God. 
There's a something else there I want to underline before I start to speak about the blessing of the covenant. There's a something there I want to underline there. Are you together with me? And one of the things I want to underline here is he supposed and he was look like it was forget. That person was forget. That means Mephibosheth has been forgetting in the house of uh, the house of Make, in the time of sufferance, in the time of poverty. But it looked like someone in the Bible, in the word of God, by the spirit of God, come and enter in the spirit of David and say, there's still someone who's still, still alive. Still alive. Someone who's still alive. Something very particular is this. This guy, on the name of Mephibosheth, went through of the moment of difficult, the moment of battle, the moment who has been forgotten, the moment who has been abandoned. But something is very important is this. Every person of his family has been killed by law, has been killed by suffering, has been killed by poverty, has been killed by the enemy. And it is the only one person who remains alive on that period, on that moment. And that only person is this guy we are talking about in the name of Mephibosheth. And there is a something special I'm talking about this moment. Since the beginning of the year, since the last year, since two years, two, uh, four years, ten years before, you went through so many difficult and so many times, so many tough moments of your life. But one of the things very important is this. Despite the things you went through, the end of God upon your life keep you alive. Keep you alive. Hallelujah. Keep you alive. And the Bible says, for all those who they still alive, the Bible says, there's still hope for them. There's still hope for them. And I can prophesy this morning that despite the difficult where you went through this moment of lockdown, despite the moment that you went through on this moment of COVID-19, but the end of God keep you alive. And if the end of God keep you alive, that means for this month of October, for the rest of the year, there's still hope for you. There's still hope for your life. There's still hope for your family. There's still hope for your future. Why? The enemy could not destroy you. The enemy could not kill you. The enemy could not bear you. And if the enemy could not kill you and destroy you, that means whatever can come from this month and go on, he can't kill you, he can't destroy you, he can't put you down. Because this time is coming. It's the time when the Lord wants to raise your head. The Lord wants to raise your future. The Lord wants to raise your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are together with me, I want to hear your love. Amen. The time of raising of the head of someone is coming now. The time of deliverance of the family of someone is coming now. The enemy could walk and say it's going to kill you, to destroy you, to raise your name, to raise the name of your family, to raise your future. But the end of God keep you alive up until today. And if the end of God keep you alive up until today, that means today is the end of the reign of darkness upon your life. If you are together with me, I want to hear your elder, amen. Is the last day of darkness in your life. Is the end of the time of darkness in your life. This is the reason the Bible says for those who there was a living under death and the tough moment like Zabulon and Naphtali. The Bible says they saw the light of God come upon their life. Beloved, because of the power of the covenant this morning, there's a light of God is coming in the life of someone. There's a light of God is coming in the family of someone. There's a light of God is coming in the destiny of someone. If you are the one, I want to hear your amen. If you are the one, I want to hear your louder amen. 
And this covenant I'm talking this morning is not covenant with Jonathan, but I'm talking regarding a covenant together with Jesus. The light of God who come and shine in the middle of darkness. And darkness could not understand it. Darkness could not stop him. Darkness could not arrest him. Because it was the light of God who has been sent in the world so that that light can shine in the middle of darkness. And if light come, that means it's the end of darkness. If light come, that means it's the end of darkness. And this morning, I said to someone, I don't get the place where the enemy put you. I don't care the place where the enemy put your life. The enemy put your family. You can be in the, ma- the house of the house of Maki like Lodeba. But I don't care about Lodeba. I don't care about Cape Town. I don't care about your origin. I don't care about what the enemy has done in your life. But what I know, there is a light is coming. There is a light of deliverance is coming. There's a light of good news is coming. There's a light of healing is coming. There is a light of opening doors is coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. He was sitting in the house of Lord the Bar. We start to know what is going to happen. And was living under fear. I don't know what you are fearing this morning. But when the word of God come and say they still alive someone. They say yes they still alive someone. And when the word arrived to that person. The king said to Mr. Moshet, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I said to someone this morning, don't be afraid. Regarding your future, don't be afraid. Regarding your studies, don't be afraid. Regarding your family, don't be afraid. Regarding your situation, your financial situation, don't be afraid. Regarding your healthy situation, what I know this morning, there is a good news is coming to you. Hallelujah. There is a deliverance of God is coming to you. If you are together with me, I want to hear your louder. Amen. It was, he, he was a sitting in Lodeba without to know what is going to happen to him. Without to know what is going to come to him. The only, only things he was fearing, he was fearing to die. Because he know that everybody in his family died before. And he said, I'm the one who remain. And now, I'm the only one. The only one he was waiting now in his life is all. They could see the death to see the enemy to come and to pursue him even into the place where he was hiding. But let me tell you the truth. When the end of God hides you, when the end of God protects you, when the hold of God is upon you, when the end of God is upon your life, the enemy can look for you. He can look for your trouble. But God is able to change what the enemy prepare against your life. God is able to change it and to become a good news for you. God is able to change it and to become a way of deliverance for you. God is able to change it and to become a way of hope for you. This is the reason he said, don't be afraid. I said to someone, don't be afraid. The year is going to finish now, but don't be afraid. The year is going to finish now, but don't be afraid. The academic year is going to finish now, but don't be afraid. There is a light of God is coming upon your life. And you shall come out from Lodeba. And you shall come out from that house. And you shall come out from that, I don't know, house. For that situation. For that prison. For that position. Why? Because uh, the covenant together with God never fell. Covenant together with God never fell. Everybody could forget him. But David could not forget him. If David could not forget how much regarding God, God never forgets. People, they can forget, but God never forgets. People can forget, but God never forgets. This is the reason this morning I can say to someone, the remembrance of God is coming upon the life of someone. You are together with me. I want to hear your louder. Amen. Hallelujah. And when David sent people to go, and to find the way, way, which place, which house this guy was, uh, was, uh, has been unlocked, was hiding. The Bible says, he sent on that place the servant so that the servant, they can take him and they can come together with him in the palace of the king. Remember, 
there was a law in the palace of the king and said that uh, the lamb could not never enter in the house of David in Jerusalem. Why? Because when David was fighting for possession of Jebus or Jerusalem, the Bible said the king of Jebus sent to, jo to, to, to David the lamb and the, 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 and the blind people to fight him. And they said, I'm not going to fight you because you are not I'm at my level of battle. You are not at my level of battle. I'm going to send the lamb and, and the blind. They are going to fight you. And it was something like humiliation for David. Why it was humiliation for David? Because David, it was a great, a great conqueror. It, it was a great hero. It was a, a great fighter. When David go out for battle, he never come and be conquered by the enemy. When David go out for battle, he always he come back with victory. For David, he could not hear your name, your origin, and the name of your father. Because God was together with him, and he know that every time I shall go for battle, victory is going to come to my side. This is the power of government. Covenant together with God. When you are in the covenant together with God, I don't care the name of the person who is fighting your life. I don't care the name of the grandfather who is fighting your life. Of the auntie who is fighting your life. And this morning I can say to someone, don't be afraid because of the name. Don't be afraid because of the greatness. Don't be afraid because of the story that you know about what happened in your family. It's not depending on the name of that person. And it's not also depending of your name, but it's depending of who is inside of you. It's depending of who is together and working together with you. And the Bible says, the one is in you is greater and powerful than those who they are fighting against your life. And because of the name of Jesus, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every mouth shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. It's not depending of your age. It's not depending of your origin. It's not be de depending of your sex, but it's depending of who is inside of you and who is working together with you and who is the government together with you. Who is the government together with you? If you're together with me, let me hear another, a louder amen. Hallelujah. And the end of God, the Bible said to us that they come and took that guy. It was a lamb. Why? It was a lamb. Why? Because, you know, in the, king, in the palace of the king, there was a saying, nobody shall enter in the, the palace of the king. Because of that humiliation. Because for David, it was an humiliation. How come, greater that I am, they can send to me lamb and the blend to come and to fight against me? And the Bible says, even if David himself he did not go out for battle for that day. You know, when you know who you are and what God has been put in you, you can't start to defend yourself. There's a time God himself is going to defend you. This is the moment you need to know who you are really in Christ. Who you are really when you are working together with God. You need to know who you are and you need to know who is in you. Hallelujah. David said that, no, I can't go because this is an humiliation. You know, sometimes you, do, you don't need to answer to some humiliation. You need to act. <laughs> you don't need to answer. You need to act. You don't need to say anything, but you need to act. Hallelujah. And David said also, in my camp, I can't go to this battle because this battle is a humiliation. I'm a greater than what they are thinking that I am. I'm going to show them that I'm very greater than what they know that I am. Hallelujah. You know, what you are fearing is fearing you also. Those you are fearing, they are fearing you. Hallelujah. And that is the truth. David said, who in my camp can come out and can go and fight for me this blend and this lamb? I can't go for this battle. But if you can go for this battle for me and you destroy them from today, there shall be a law. 
And the Bible says, people come out. Giants, the strong men of David, they come out and they went to that battle. And they struck down all the blind and the lame. And they took Jebus. We call it Jerusalem today. It was Jebus in the beginning. And they come and they call David and say, come and take the throne. Come and take the place. Come and take the city. And David said, from today, from today, when I'm going to reign in this city and this country, no lamb and no blind shall enter in the palace of the king. Because every time I can see lamb and blind, I'm going to remember the humiliation that the king of Jebus put on my way. And that was the law. This is the reason when they ask, they say, there's still someone to the house of Saul who's still alive. And that the king want to show him the kindness of God. The Bible say, Ziba say, yes, there's still someone, but that person is a lamb. That was the matter. That was the matter. You want to show him kindness, but remember that you are the one who put the law. That no lamb and no blame shall come here. And that person that you want to show kindness, he not deserve to receive it because the law say no lamb and no blame shall enter in the palace. The power of government. But when David say, he has said that, he say, yes, I know that I'm the one who writes the law. But if I'm the one who wrote the law, I can break that law because of the government. I can break that law because of government. I made a government together with Jonathan. I don't care in which condition that guy is still up until now. But what I know is a government that I made. You know, when there is a government, government is able to break laws of condemnation and limitation. Hallelujah. Government is a, is a, is a, is a, is a power. Is a blessing able to break law of limitation and condemnation. And this is what happened. He has been condemned because of the law? Yes. He's the one who commits sin? No. What happened is just a victim of something who happened to him. You know, there is a, there is a things in our family, we are just victims of what happened. We did not commit sin. We was not there when the things was, uh, was happening. But because of what others done in their life, there is a law and limitation has been put in family, in generation, and even in destinies. But when government enter, when government come, government break every limitation and every law. This is the reason that uh, David said, I know that that guy is a, a lame guy. I know that there is a law. But because I made a covenant to his father, this is the reason I want you guys to go and to brought him here. To brought him here. Hallelujah. When there is a covenant below, even if there is a things that you don't deserve in your life, covenant can give you to you. Covenant can give it to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Government can give it to you. This is the reason. There is, a, there is a, some protection. There is a, some help. There is a, some blessing. There is some grace that we are receiving. Not because we deserve it, but because there is a government together, us and God. Because there is a government together, God and us. Because there is a government together uh, between Jesus and us. And through the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, we enter in a new government. If they say the new government, that means there is a old government. And the old government was condemning us. But the new government come to break condemnation and to give, you, to give us grace. To break condemnation and to give us favor. This is the reason. This morning, there is a favor of God upon the life of someone. There is a favor is going to locate you. There is a grace is going to locate you. There is a grace is going to locate your life, to locate your family. If you are the one who believe in that grace, I want to hear your louder. Amen. And let the grace of God locate your family this morning so that uh, through the grace, uh, any law of condemnation, any law of limitation be broken this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So that by the covenant of God, those of uh, 
doors of palace, doors of blessing, doors of greatness, doors of blessing be open for you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God is able to make it to happen in your life. Even if someone stood up before and said something so that he can put your life and your family in trouble. But when government come, government come and break the law. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, they sent the people in the house of Maki to go and to take the land. Can you imagine the one who was waiting to the death to come? He was waiting for death to come. He was waiting the day of his death. He was waiting that someone from the house of the king, when he's going to come here, the only one thing he's going to do is to kill me. But when the king sent the people, the lamb has been the lamb has been taken in the uh, 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 in the palace, not yet in the palace, but uh, 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 il a été pris dans dans quoi? Dans le cortège des gens et des hommes du palais. Are you together with me? Are you together with me? There is a time when government started to work for your life. The Lord is able to locate you. To take you from the very, very low level of your life. And to put you to the very higher level of your life. Where you never deserve and never dream in your life. That you can enter and you can arrive. Hallelujah. This is what happened to Mephibosheth. He never, he never dreamed that one of the day he can be also taken in the chariot of the king. <laughs> in the cortege of the king. How do you say it in English? Huh? Huh? In the convoy of the king. He never think something like that in his life. There is a thing that you never think about it in your life. But when you enter in the government together with God, God is able to force it to happen in your life. God is able to force it to happen in your family. And you can be the first one to open the door of the comfort of the, the comfort of the king, the comfort of the palace, the comfort of glory in your life and in your destiny. Because of what? Because of the government. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the lamb has been taken in the convent and when they take him, the Bible says they take him up until to enter in the palace. The door who could reject him, the door who could kill him, the door who could put an end to his life, it becomes the door of glory, the door of life, the door of blessing. God is able to change everything because of the government. And this is what is going to happen in the life of someone during this month. The door supposed to kill you is going to be the door of your glory. The law who's supposed to kill you is going to be changed for the law of your blessing. You are together with me. I want to hear your louder amen. Because of what? Because of the government. Hallelujah. And when he enter in the palace, the last things I want to say about is when the, the king saw him, the king just delivered two words. The first word is, don't be afraid. The second one, you are not just come and go back to your place. You are going to come and stay here. The palace is going to be your house. Are you together with me? Palace is going to be your house. That means there is a sign, there is a kind of grace and kind of blessing who is going to dwell in the life of someone uh, 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 up until it's not going to be just once in your life. It's not going to be something who happened time to time in your life. But it's going to be your dwelling. There is a blessing, level of blessing, level of glory, level of grace. Where somebody is going to dwell. It's not going to come time to time. That uh, the Bible says, the spirit of God come upon me and take me to the third level of the heaven. Mm -mm. For now, it's not going to take you to the third level. And when you finish to see, it takes you back 
in your first place. No, no. For this time around, when the Lord shall take you up, the Lord shall take you up and shall give you a dwelling in the glory, a dwelling in the blessing, a dwelling in the greatness. Are you together with me? That means it's going to be the beginning of a new chapter of your life. It's going to be a beginning of a new agenda of God upon your life. And when it's going to happen, you are going to forget all the past things. Because the Lord shall change everything. You enter in the palace, you shall stay here. You shall live here. And not only you shall stay and live here, you shall eat every day to my table. You shall eat every day to my table. Can you imagine? A person who used to eat sitting down. Now he's supposed to eat now to the table. Not any table, but the table of the king. The table of the king. You see, there is a change of things in our lives. When it happens, you can never even need to think about it. You see, the reason the Bible says, I shall do among you some things. When it's going to come, when it's going to happen, you are not going to believe it. We are at the level where the Lord is going to surprise some persons, some families here. The Lord is going to surprise you. The change is going to happen in your life. You can never believe it. And you, you're going to start to ask yourself, is it me who is sitting here eating with the king or is it someone else? But it's going to be you. I'm not talking to anyone here. I'm talking to you. Because this is your word this morning is the word of restoration of the glory of God upon your life. Restoration of grace of God upon your life. Restoration of what you lost in your life. The Lord going to restore it. This is the word I'm giving to someone this morning because in the power of government, there is a power of restoration. And the king said, from today, everything belongs to your father's house. Well, every blessing will belong to your father's house. From today, Ziba, you are not going to continue to enjoy it. That means when Mephibosheth was suffering somewhere, Ziba was enjoying. Ziba was enjoying the blessing, was enjoying every harvest who belonged to the house of Saul. Who, who is the person who is enjoying your blessing? On the time where you, you, are, you, are, you are continue to cry and to fast and to pray in the presence of God. But this morning, let me tell you the truth. The one who was uh, sitting and enjoying your blessing from today, by the word of God of this morning, the reign of that person is finished. The reign and domination of that power is finished. The mandate of that power is finished. It's going to expire from today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everything who belongs to you, belong to your father, belong to your house, belong to your destiny, it shall be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you imagine the person who was, uh, was uh, dying with anger? Supposed to be the person who people supposed to work for him. People supposed to work for him. Because when David said, you shall stay in my house, eat together with me, every day to my table, you're going to get bread. And David said, all the servants of your father, they are, going start to, they are going now to start to work for you. That means Ziba, you and your family. And the Bible says, Ziba, in that time, there was a seven son of Ziba and 15 servants who were supposed to work for, for, for Mephibosheth. But they was working for Ziba. And Ziba in the palace was enjoying the blessing of the house of Saul. And in the same time, the one who's supposed to sit on the throne, the one who's supposed to eat, the one who's supposed to enjoy, was uh, suffering and dying if, with anger and uh, uh, with anger in, Lobe, in Lodeba. But when Carmen started to walk, everything that you lost and belonged to you belong to your house, belong to your destiny. Everything must be restored. Must be restored. And for this month of October, I'm prophesizing restoration of everything that you lost. Everything that this year 
could not give you since the beginning of the year. From this month of October, it's going to start to come back to you. It's going to start to come back to your family. It's going to come, to come, to come back to your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. And there is a, one bracket I want to open there. He did not only enter in the palace and start to eat. He became the boss of a company. He became a boss of a company because from that day, people started to work for him. People started to work for him. Hallelujah. You, you are continuing to struggle up until now. And when I'm talking, you're supposed to be a boss of a company and the people working for you. But the law of your family, the law of your father house put you and you became an slave. But this morning, that law shall be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not going to work for anybody. But people, they are going to work for you. Ay, 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 ay. This is a prophecy for someone here. You are not going to work for anybody. People, they shall start to work for you. People, they shall start to work for you. You shall become a great boss with a great company, paying people and working for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the grace of God upon your life. I release the favor of God upon your life. I release the grace upon your life. And any power who take you for a long time in poverty, when you're supposed to become the chief of a company, that law is destroying now. It's destroying now. It's destroying now. Is destroying now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the grace through the government of God take you from every place where the law of your family took you so that you can recuperate your place in the kingdom, in the palace, in business, in career, in financial. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the end of God change things in your life from today in the mighty name of Jesus. You believe that I want to hear a great amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he entered in the palace, the Bible showed to us that he was sitting always in the palace, eating always in the palace. And people, they was working for him. They was working for him. I want to close and say, in this month, who is starting where we are now, there is a breakthrough of financial ways, of openings of business, of greatness of God is coming in the life of someone here. You believe that? I want to hear your louder amen. And let the Lord bless his words in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's stand everywhere we are. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand in the presence of God. The blessing of the government. Hallelujah. The blessing of the government. The government take him from Lodeba to the palace. Are you together with me? The government broke the law who was closed every door in his life. The government made him to become a businessman from that day. A government made him to become the boss and people start to work for him. When there's a government, the Lord shall keep you, shall protect you and uh, you shall survive every moment of suffering and the trouble that the enemy can put in your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are still alive, the Bible says, there's still hope for them. And this morning, I said to someone, there's still hope for you. There's still hope for your future. And there's still hope for your family. Lift your two hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let's pray. 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 Raise up your voice. Raise up your voice. Thank the Lord for the word of this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing of the government. we thank you we thank you for the word in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your right hand and say after me. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
by the power of revelation of this morning, the blessing of the government, I pray this morning, any law of enemy standing on my way to stop me, to enter in my blessing, in my, my, in my inheritance, in my glory, this morning, I break it down. I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Any kind of law existing in the spiritual realm, material realm, financial realm, physical realm, this morning, by the blood of Jesus, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray for two minutes. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Jonathan. Masabra kata kata kaya mama mama mande rebo shaka. Ika ba 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 shanda ba 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 seke. Last toke plora shide saya yara ba 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 ba. Shanda ba 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 shaka. Ba ra kata 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 kata. La sakataria mande. Ika ba 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 shanda ba 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 seke. Lebra sota ya mande. I Say after me in the mighty name of Jesus. Any house, house of Lodeba who want to keep me in poverty. In limitation, in limitation, in blockage, in blockage by the power of the blood of Jesus. Of of this, Jesus morning, this morning, I break down, I, break it I rebuke it, I, it, I, destroy, it, I destroy it, be scattered, be scattered by, fire, by, fire, by fire in the mighty fire, name of Jesus. Name Put your hands together and let's pray for you. Be scattered. Be scattered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say after me, in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the government. I pray. I pray. For supernatural breakthrough, supernatural breakthrough, financial breakthrough, breakthrough in the business, in the mighty name of Jesus, this month, this year, in the mighty name of Jesus, let me let it be open, let it be open for me, for my destiny, for my family, in the mighty name of Jesus, supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs Supernatural in the mighty name of Jesus, in, Jesus. in financial way, financial in business, business, in career, in, career. in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Put it together and let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Financial breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. In my businesses. All that I have. All that I plan. In the name of Jesus. Come to pass. Come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the grace of God upon your life. I pray for favor of God upon your life. Let this month give you good news. Let this month give you breakthroughs. Supernatural opening, I prophesize upon your life. I prophesy upon your family. Supernatural breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. Career breakthrough. Business breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
and the every person here who the enemy work to put down this month in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for restoration I pray for relevement in the mighty name of Jesus let the Lord raise up your heads let the Lord raise up your business raise up your career raise up your finance in the mighty name of Jesus let the grace of God come upon you and come upon your family. Every law of destruction, every law of death, by any means, this morning upon your life, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to survive any agenda of the enemy. You are not going to die before your time. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are going to survive it. You are going to survive it. You are going to survive the agenda of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive grace of life. Receive grace of restoration. Receive grace of elevation. During this month of October. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. And all together we say amen. Put your hand together for the glory of God. If you are together with me, I want to hear your amen. amen. The key for all this, all, the, all, all this blessing is to enter in the covenant together with God. Enter in the covenant together with God. Someone say amen. amen. Covenant is something that they never break. When you say that you belong to God, walk together with God. Live for God. Are you together with me? Walk together with God. Live for God. Stay with God. Are you together with me? For any means, never break that covenant and say, I'm very tired now. I'm going to leave these things. No. When there is a covenant, you need to keep your covenant together with God so that God can keep his words upon your life. God can keep his words regarding your life. Every time, God never break his covenant. It's only men who break their covenant together with God. Men break their covenant together with God. How many times that you say to the Lord, I'm going to save you. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to live together with you. But after a few months, you forget about it and you start to do other things. I'm talking to someone here. You need to repent yourself and come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. Enter in the covenant with God. Renew your covenant together with God. Walk together with God. Live for God. And you shall see the faithfulness of God in your life. God is a faithful God. He never fail. God never fail. Even in the tarry, promise, tarry, word, tarry, blessing, tarry, beloved, wait for it. It's going to come. It's going to be manifest. The Lord shall fulfill his word. Enter in the covenant together with God. If you broke your covenant together with God, this morning you need to renew it. You need to come back to God. You need to repent. You need to confess. You need to change your mind so that you can come back to the Lord and the Lord shall help you and shall bless you. If you are together with me, say another amen. Let's put our hand together once again. We are going slowly, but surely, because we know that in a few days, we are preparing ourselves for next Sunday, where we are going to be in the, a special Sunday, is a special Sunday, like we say, next Sunday, where we are going to stand in the presence of God from 8 up until 2, in three combined service, three combined service in one. We are going to start from 8 up until, up until 2 p.m. We shall stand together in a Sunday, special Sunday of prayer. Special Sunday of prayer. Are you together with me? Who are you, you great mountain? You shall be uprooted. It's going to be the topic of next Sunday. Who are you, you great mountain? You shall be uprooted. You need to stand. We need to stand in the presence of God next Sunday. Any mountain, problem, situation, who present themselves like a mountain in your life, Next Sunday, it shall be uprooted. 
he shall be uprooted. You see, the reason I want you to prepare yourself from 8 up until 2 p.m. We are going to stand in a moment of fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer is a fast we are going to give to God next Sunday. Hallelujah. If you used to eat every Sunday before you come to church, next Sunday you are going to fast. <laughs> we are going to fast Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to kill you from 8 to 2. Hmm. Hallelujah. Just give that like an offering to the Lord for next Sunday. And I'm telling you the truth. You shall be surprised by what the Lord is able to do in your life. Hallelujah. In this week, we are going to stand in the presence of God like usually. Thursday, in our moment of fasting and prayer from 11 up until 5 p.m. By the grace of God, for this week, brother, brother, brother Eric Kalonji is going to lead us in prayer. And by the grace of God, we are going to come back with the word of God and have time in prayer so that we are preparing our next coming Sunday in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And uh, our special offering of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this month is going to be on the 31st of October. Special Sunday offering is going to be on the 31st, 31st October. We are going to finish the month together in the presence of God with a special Sunday of special offering like usually on the 31st uh, 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 October. Hallelujah. To the end of this month, we are not going to have our three days of fasting and prayer. Why? We are preparing ourselves because next month from the 14th of November, we are starting our 21 days of fasting and prayer. Next month for the 14th of November up until on the 5th of December, we are going to be in 21 days of fasting and prayer. Hallelujah. I see how the Lord is going to do good to us in that moment. It's going to be a very blessing moment we are going to spend in the presence of God. Prepare yourself and start to pray for it and the Lord is going to bless you. Amen, 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 amen. And God bless you. For this time around, I want you to prepare your offering. We are going to serve the Lord. We are going to give to the Lord what we brought for him this morning. I want to say to someone here, when we are talking about government, even it to give to the Lord is also a government. Remember, the Bible say, the Bible say, the Bible say, if day and night shall be, if time of cold and time of hot shall be, the Bible say, the time of sowing and reaping shall be also. That means to give to the Lord, to sow in the, the house of God, in the, the work of God, is also a government. Is also a government. This is the reason this morning we are instating, we are, we are underlining to be in the government together with God. Don't stop what you are used to do. Don't stop what you know to do. Like government together with God. Hallelujah. There is a blessing in the government. Every government, every government, have a special blessing to release in the life of people of God. And the reason of government is a blessing. Hallelujah. The benefit of the government is a blessing. There never be government with that blessing. The Lord put government so that he can bless. We need only to respect what we say and what the Lord say and what the word say. When we respect it, beloved, there is a blessing of God who shall be poor upon your life. I want you to take your offering. We bless the name of the Lord. Last Sunday, we distribute some envelope here. We bless God for that. If you are ready for that, you are going to give it back this morning. The envelope of last Sunday is a contribution to the construction of the house of God. But there is a special person here. Remember, those those together with us in uh, the Thursday meeting of fasting and prayer. There is a special envelope that we give to some person here regarding doors and windows for the house of God. If it's a door and window for the house of God, don't put it in the basket. I want to take it in my hand. And I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray for you. Are you together with me? If you was not here last Sunday or last Thursday, but you are talking about doors and windows, and you are ready to do something for it, 
You are welcome this morning. Take also an envelope and you shall write up. I bless you. For those who took the envelope for windows and doors last Thursday, I'm going to go out for five minutes. I want to receive you and I want to give a special blessing upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you together with me? And God bless you all in Jesus' name. Take your offering and we shall pray. You want to participate in a special way regarding those and blessing? Ask to the protocol. They shall give you an envelope and also you, you can see us and tell us what you want to do. And uh, we are going also to pray for you. Take your envelope this morning and the Lord shall bless you. And we are going to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray for the seed of this morning. Let this seed be blessed. Let your grace come upon your people. I release blessing. I release grace. I release breakthroughs. I release supernatural opening in the life of your people. And let by grace this morning of revelation, any law of condemnation, any law of limitation, any law of blockage, let it be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your end and your grace come upon your people. Open doors. Bless the work of their hands. Bless their career in the mighty name of Jesus. Let grace of enlargement, multiplication, increase, be released in the mighty name of Jesus. And the power of destruction be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and we dedicate the seed of this morning to you. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father, and we say amen. God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. When we are singing together with our choir, in the mighty name of Jesus, we shall move everywhere we are. And we can come and give our offering to the Lord this morning. And God bless you. in the mighty name of Jesus we say thank you for the seed of this morning we want to dedicate it to you let it be blessed, sanctified and multiplied and be useful for the work we are doing in this place and bless every person who stretches hand with joy in the basket of this morning in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and all together we say amen and God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus amen amen there is a special announcement here for the Department of Sisters. They say they want to invite you, all the sisters in the house of God, to a special and particular meeting on the 30th of October of this month. The 30th of October in this place from 9 up until half past 12. All the sisters in the house of God, you are invited to take place to this meeting, special meeting on the 30 on the 30 of October for the glory of God God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen, Amen to the end of this service, I want to receive please, by the grace of God uh, uh, brother Pixie and his wife, I want also to, to receive mama doctor to the end of this service please for the glory of God God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Any announcement? No. God bless you. This is going to be the end of this service. Can we stand together in the presence of God? Bless somebody to your left and to your right. In the mighty name of Jesus, welcome somebody. Bless somebody. Somebody there. 
and they said to somebody there, this month is the month of blessing. Is the month of blessing. Is the month of blessing. Hallelujah. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a, any visitor in the house of God. It's your first time to come and to worship together with us today. Somebody invites you and it's your first time to worship with us this morning and you are in the house of God. We want just to welcome you. If there is a, any person like that, please lift your right hand. We want to just welcome you. It's your first time to worship together with us. Yeah, there is a, there is a, there is a brothers there. Can we put our hand together for the glory of God for them? In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome in the house of God this morning. This is our first service, English service. We do have two other services it's going to follow just, just in a few minutes here. French English service is going to start in a few minutes here. But if you don't have another assembly where you are praying, that place can be yours from today for the glory of God. And I want to invite you to take also all your belongings. There is an usher around you. They want to take you and to be with you just for a few minutes and so that we can, we can spend a few time together with them regarding the church. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Lift your two hands in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to thank you the Lord, to thank the Lord for his presence, for his grace, and the time just we spend in his presence this morning. Let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray, let's pray, and let's pray. Let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank the Lord, bless him, honor him this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Mazabara kataka rabosha ikababara basemde lasto keplora laste plora shiresaya. We thank you, we glorify you, and we honor you this morning for your presence, for the grace you give us to be in your presence this morning, for the word you sent to us this morning. We honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray so that your people, when they are leaving this place, let them go in joy, in peace, in protection. In the mighty name of Jesus and every expectation that they brought in your presence this morning, let your hand and your grace locate every one of them and give solution and give answer in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we glorify you. Let them go in peace and in joy. And let the rest of the day and the week we starting be blessed for them and grace of God be upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church together, we say louder, amen. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Spend a nice Sunday with your family in the presence of God, in peace and in joy. God bless you. You are welcome.